G, take roll. Uh, number two, approval of the consent agenda, uh, A through E. And anybody got any questions or Bryce, if you want to go through some things. Uh, we'll go through uh, purchase orders, uh, general fund, it's in your packet. General fund start with. Um, there are several this month on there. Um, a lot of one time expenses, uh, especially down towards the bottom of that, uh, just to kind of get the year started. Some of our um, subscriptions uh, that we use throughout the year. Um, so you'll see that the, the amount is, is quite a bit more. Um, than what we're used to. Uh, like I said, though, um, just getting year started, there are several of those things on there. Uh, we did split our uh, insurance costs into three separate payments, so um, we should have one more of those uh, that we make. Um, so that's still included in there. Uh, Alpha Plus, uh, that's a, a program that we've used for for quite a while uh, and continue to use that in elementary. Edgenuity. Um, Edgenuity is what we use in our alternative education program and for any credit, credit recovery um, students or needs that they may have. Um, we use that, so that is a one-time uh, payment to them for the year. Um, Stephen L. Smith, financial consultant fees, a little over eight thousand. Uh, some textbooks, math books. There, Archway Marketing Services. That's what that is. Um, Canopla Communications, our new security cameras, uh, ten thousand five hundred. Uh, we did go through this entire building over here, and we updated the security <coughs> cameras. Um, so now we. We pretty much have complete coverage of this building, uh, auditorium, the gymnasium, uh, even out back uh, in the alley. Last year we had a bicycle stolen in the middle of the day right down here on the north end of the building and it was just in an area that we couldn't really see. Um, so we addressed those blind spots and had Canoco come in and uh, do that this summer. Um, and our plan is to uh, utilize um, some federal dollars to help pay for that. Um, and we can do that uh, with those dollars. Uh, so we should be able to get that back and that, that's a long-term investment. So uh, those cameras are quite a bit better than the ones that we did have here. Um, and so just a, another way that we can upgrade some security features that we have. Um, Microsoft licenses, again, a one-time expense. Um, Digi Security Systems for a little over a thousand uh, down there, number 107. Um, that's for the kiosks, the two that we use uh, to sign in and out at both buildings. Those licenses for that. Um, so, like I said, a lot of one time expenses um, up there at the top, just on our regular monthly expenses. Um, our electric bill is quite a bit more, of course, as hot as it's been. Um, we expected that to be higher, but utility costs have gone up overall, uh, not just for us, but for everybody. And so um, that's, we gotta, we'll got we keep an eye on that uh, as we go through the year. Hopefully temperatures are going to start cooling off at some point. We'll get a little relief that way. But um, like I said, other than those, most of the bigger ones, one time cost at the beginning of the year to get things going, so it's a little bit higher now. Last year we had kind of spread some of those things out as much as we could. Um, we didn't have the carryover to work with, and so we do now. And so we're able to go ahead and pay for some of those things up front now and uh, get those taken care of. Um, that covers most of the general fund, uh, or all of the general fund purchases listed here. Uh, building fund, um, the biggest expense we had in the building fund is we had to replace the compressor 
on the air conditioner over at the field house. That went out just right at the beginning. Um, and it was down for uh, a week and a half or two weeks. Um, and so we had to have uh, AC services. Uh, we had to get that ordered and, and get it replaced. And it's up and running now. Uh, so that was a big expense that we did have $4,600 uh, out of the building fund for this last month. Uh, child nutrition. Uh, we have had a few things we've had to address as far as repairs. Our freezer has uh, kind of been giving us some fits, and so we've had to make some repairs down there in the kitchen. Uh, so we do have a few extra expenses there other than just our regular uh, monthly expenses to Keystone, Luck and Bills. Uh, they're the ones that came and did the work on the freezer, uh, and that was for a little over $3,700. Uh, we had to replace a piece of plexiglass on the salad bar at the elementary, uh, and that was that was expensive, uh, $320. And then we had to do uh, just some yearly uh, suppression testing. Uh, it's ABS fire, $876. So a couple things there that had to come out of child nutrition that uh, aren't normal. Other than that, it's kind of business as usual. Uh, and then our uh, bond fund, uh, there was money there that was uh, transferred to make the deadline. Uh, that was, yeah, just to make the deadline, it was a wire transfer that we had to make, make the payment on that, 501000 Any questions through A through D? Um, activity report, Kinder is not here. Um, it's just kind of been business as usual there. Uh, lots of activities going on, so uh, you know, lots of different things going in and out there, with officials and gatekeepers and fundraising. Uh, just a lot of normal activities there. Um, Treasurer's report, uh, we do have that. Um, for you, and that would be the space here, it's in there somewhere. It's on the bottom. On the bottom, okay. Uh, and that kind of gives you a look, now that's at the end of August. Uh, hasn't changed a lot, but those will give you uh, kind of an idea of our ending monthly balances there. As you can see, our general fund has $989,356. Building funds at one hundred and fifty four thousand ninety nine. Uh, our child nutrition fund has one hundred and twenty five thousand three twenty two. Roof bond fund uh, after that payment uh, still has sixty four thousand three hundred three in it, and then the seeking fund sits at thirty thousand two forty five. So, uh, you know, those those numbers uh, are are good. Uh, I wouldn't say that they're great. We still have some goals that we're trying to get to, but we're getting much closer. And, uh, we do have some room to breathe, and we've been able to address some needs that we have and be able to do that with some confidence. Uh, so that's good. So things there are uh, still going in the right direction. We do have a couple uh, fundraising requests on E. Baseball, we'd like to sell hats, Terry the Chief hats. Uh, and then our girls and boys uh, basketball teams would like to sell the discount cards that they do each year. Uh, and I have those those requests with me. Uh, so those are the two requests there. So that that would be everything uh, A through E. And if there's any questions on those, I will do my best to answer. Questions, concerns? I'd like to separate A just because I wasn't here on the, on the August 8th minute, so one of the guys that were here, if you could uh, make a motion just to approve A, and then we'll do B through E together. I have a motion to approve A. I have a motion to approve A. Do have a second? Second. Is there a second? Judy? Well done. Yes. Good one? Yes. Partner? I'm sorry. I have a second. Oh, right. Sorry. 
Parker? Yes. Gibson? Yes. Collins? Yes. Thank you. Uh, B through E, I'll make a motion to approve B through E. Do I have a second? Gibson second. second. Judy? Littlefield? Yes. Goodwin? Yes. Parker? Yes. Gibson? Yes. Collins? Yes. Number three, principal's report. Um, so I look back last year. At this time, right now, as of today, we have 110 students enrolled in high school, 9 through 12. We have 91 enrolled in junior high. That's two up from last year, the exact same date last year in the high school, and down in the middle school from the exact same date. Um, so we're pretty steady. Uh, our numbers are good, the lower we get, though, so that's good. Good to see. Uh, one thing I'd like to mind, remind more in football, softball, I mean, we're going to get in activities is that uh, sportsmanship is everybody's responsibility. So keep that in mind when we go to activities. I know the OSSA is big on that right now, so I'd just like to point that out. Um, softball had their last home game tonight, senior night, could have a double header. They won their first one, 4 3. You know that. Um, they start district softball next week at Sealing. Uh, I'm not sure on the times yet or the dates exactly. They um, this Thursday, the sophomores, this is going to be the sophomore class, will be going to Tulsa, the entire class, on Thursday to tour the Sherwin Miller Museum of Jewish Art Holocaust Museum. Um, one of our new state mandates is that we expose all of our, uh, at least once, to uh, the Holocaust. So what a better way than take the entire class to visit that museum. Um, so they're going Thursday with Ms. Baldwin and Mr. Paris. And I believe uh, Ms. Baldwin told me the Cherokee Education Foundation is, is going to help with the costs and the meal that day, so that's a great, great on them. Um, Rustin James will receive the American FFA degree this year at the National FFA Convention, so former student that graduated. Um, right now, the Oklahoma State Fair starts this week. Uh, currently, they're working on State Fair indoor exhibits. There's 57, I believe she told me, she's taking down tomorrow. Um, students are competing in skill -thons, livestock judging, dairy judging, as well as exhibiting livestock at the Oklahoma State Fair. Um, the Alfalfa County Fair was last week. I've got a whole list of results. I don't have all of them. I know I think there were some rabbits I missed. And probably some of the horse show stuff I don't have, but I have a lot. Um, for FFA, Waylon Utterback was a champion commercial U, first place cross heifer or weather. Uh, Gavin Guffey was fifth place doe kid and fourth place doe kid. Aiden Hall was first and third with place with the chickens. Um, and the school group was first place in the goats. As far as the 4 H, uh, Stetson Metcalf was reserve champion Simital Heifer. Breck Fails was reserve grand weather lamb, reserve champion commercial U, champion hand weather, junior lamb showmanship. Uh, Levi Solis was reserve champion spec weather. Everett Utterback was champion spec weather. Tegan Rose was reserve champion hand weather. Tragen Rose was reserve champion shrop weather. Tannis Allison was third place doe, second place doe, third place doe. Um, Trace Allison was fourth place doe. Price Poe was first place hand weather. Grand Weather Goat, Intermediate Goat Showmanship. Perry Poe was first place Weather Goat, third place Weather Goat, Junior Goat Showmanship. Aubrey Hughes was Reserve Grand Weather Goat, second place Weather Goat times two. Um, and Aubrey Cudmore was a Champion Division II Weather Goat. And then Livestock Judging for the FFA and 4-H. Uh, the first place Junior FFA team was Gavin Guffey, Dominic Link, Katie Reese, and Juan Castro. High Individual Junior FFA was Gavin Guffey. High, uh, high Reason Junior FFA was Dominic Link. Second place Junior 4-H team was Kendall Collins, Aubrey Hughes, Tegan Rose, Price Poe. Third place Junior 4-H team was Breck Fales, Perry Poe, Autumn McMahon, and Tannis Allison. Fourth place Junior 4-H team was Trace Allison, Hayden Hansel, Case Bizarre, and high individual Junior 4-H was Aubrey Hughes. Uh, I know last week Miss Jordan is here, I'll give her some credit. Our clothes closet is in that closet right over there, and it really wasn't a closet. It was just kind of jam-packed. You couldn't even walk into it. And her and Kendra took everything out and had a lot of student volunteers to move everything out, organize, go through, clean. And now when you open that door, it's like, oh, wow, this actually looks like a closet, and you can find stuff. So big thanks to them. Um, at this time, I'm going to turn it over to Ms. Gutch and some of our SPCLA students to talk about their trip to National Convention and FCCLA. So I'm not going to talk long because this is their show um, and that's something that is big to me. Um, 
I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lead them along. Maybe not. Maybe I'll follow them along. Um, but I always want them to get the credit for what they've done. So um, I told them they each have 20 minutes. I'm just kidding. They were as nervous as you guys when I said that. Um, <laughs> so just a couple things I want to point out. Um, I always like to say this isn't your mother's home ec. Um, we're not home ec anymore. We're family consumer sciences, and that's what I teach. Um, and then FCCLA is the bonus that goes along with it. And it is intracurricular, which means that the projects and things we do for FCCLA are part of um, my curriculum in my classroom. So uh, these students obviously um, are cream of the crop. They've been um, competing and they've been to lots of things. But every student in my classroom is involved in what we do with FCCLA. Um, if they want to compete and travel and do those things, then they do have to pay their dues to become part of that. But as far as service projects, fundraisers, things like that, um, it's a big, a big family uh, project. So um, I do have a little packet for you. I won't go through all of that, but just some highlights over the last um, eight years. This is, um, I'm sorry, my ninth year. So all of these numbers are great. Um, 15 state champions, 10 state runners up, uh, six third place state winners, um, a national champion, four national runners up, six-time Gold Star Chapter of Excellence, 39 students who have attended a national leadership conference. We've had 11 district officers, three district presidents, and one state officer. And then Virtual Business Challenge, two national champions, five national runners up, and three third place finishes at national level. Um, those are great. But those numbers aren't why they do what they do. Um, maybe for some of them they're competitive. I'm a little competitive myself, um, but the important thing is what do they get in the process? So it's great to go and get plaques and medals and trophies, but what they don't realize is that from point A to point B, that's where the important stuff happens. So uh, finally, the biggest number on there is 9,000, and that is the number um, of community service hours that we have provided in the last eight years. So that's probably my favorite number out of all. Uh, what I'm going to do is introduce each of them, and then they're just going to talk for a split second. Um, I'll start with Blake, and you guys do have an individual page here. He obviously isn't here. He's on to um, his post-secondary experiences, but um, he did serve as a national evaluator for Star Event. So he was on the flip side um, in San Diego this summer and was actually judging the competition. Uh, he was the high individual state champion in meet identification, and then his team was the state runner-up. And then in 2019, uh, his virtual business challenge team was national runner-up. I'll go ahead and talk about Davin. He is on his way. Um, he went to give blood and had a little fun experience. So um, he's running a little bit behind. They kept him a little longer than he had planned on. Um, Davin came to us about a month ago from Winoka. Uh, we are super thrilled to have him. You don't get a lot of Davin booties that come um, into your program. So he was already a district officer, and so now he falls under my umbrella. Um, as a district officer, he is the vice president of membership, and then he also is our vice president of competitive events. Um, his numbers I did not include on ours because um, that was his deal before he came, but as an eighth grader, he got third place at nationals and was state runner-up. And then in San Diego, as a freshman, he was national runner-up, and he had a national gold medal, and he was the state champion last year. Okay, first up is Abby. Um, Abby has kind of a unique starving experience. As an eighth grader, she did not get to go compete at regionals because of weather. And then um, as a freshman and sophomore, uh, COVID affected her competing. So last year, she was a state qualifier in star events and national runner-up in virtual business challenge. I guess, like she said, I'm Abby. Um, I've been in Miss Sketches class since I was in seventh grade, so her and I got like, to have a pretty good relationship. And I've been pretty active in FCCLA, I'd like to say. Um, like she said, um, Riley, and I, Riley Hensley and I did the Virtual Business Challenge, which is basically you do a simulator and you kind of make sure your little guy doesn't die, you got to pay your taxes. I learned a lot about doing taxes and was in Miss Sketch's room until about midnight doing my taxes during state convention. <laughs> and, but it all worked out. So, like I said, we got second and I got to go up on stage at Nationals in San Diego, get the plaque, and so that was cool. Also at San Diego, 
I got to be a part of the Oklahoma what's it called, like, voting, delegate. voting delegate team. So me and like eight other people just from around the state, we were together a lot. I was with them pretty much all day, one day and a few hours the other few days. And we sat in on the networking and all of the speeches for all of the national officer candidates. And then after that, we sat down with the lady that was in charge of us, a teacher from Edmond, and we judged all of them. And basically, we cast the ballot for Oklahoma FCCLA, who Oklahoma would vote for in the national um, like officers. So that was a really cool experience. And I remember, and I'm pretty good friends with some of the people I was with, and it's interesting to see them on some of the things. And um, that's about it. <laughs> Okay, next is Carson Schombacher. Um, in 2021, she was a state qualifier in star events. Uh, last year, she was state champion in her star event. And nationally, she got a silver medal and was 18th overall. I probably should have prefaced this um, before they started, but thousands of kids start out competing. Um, our events move from district to region to state, just like um, I compare it to athletic competitions. Um, so you have to win to keep going on. So um, out of thousands of people who start, um, even making it to San Diego is a huge deal. And then uh, finishing top 20, top 10, top 5, um, that's just icing on the cake. So, um, and then also in 2021, Carson's virtual business team was national champions. Okay. So I got to compete in career investigation, and I researched the career of a teacher and a coach. And um, while I did that and put this portfolio together, I actually got to job shadow Coach Dieselhorse in um, at Northwestern, and I got to go to one of their practices, and I sat in with them when they watched film, and then um, another time I went to their game, and at halftime I got to go in there with them, which was very cool, except for they were losing, so it was super happy. <laughs> but, um, and so then I won state in my event, and I got to compete at nationals in San Diego. And that was just a really cool experience, the whole convention in San Diego. And um, I've gained a lot of um, confidence in my public speaking, and um, I've gained leadership skills through this. And so I'm very thankful for all of the um, experiences and opportunities that I've had through so. Uh, next is Kinley Patterson. Uh, Kinley is just a freshman this year. So as an eighth grader in her first year, uh, she was state champion in her event, and then she finished with the national gold medal, and she is our first national star event champion. So I competed in career investigation as well. Um, I did a general position. I did not get a chance to job title because of COVID. But I learned a lot about the career, and it was very interesting because it's a possible career choice for myself. And so I like exploring different careers and got a lot of opportunities to talk to different doctors and stuff like that. Um, I, like she said, I got first at state and got to go compete at San Diego. It was a very cool opportunity to go there, and I really like um, hearing what the judges have to say afterwards because it betters myself and my public speaking skills. Okay, next is Tessa Littlefield. Uh, Tessa was also just an eighth grader last year. She competed in her star event and she was state champion. And her event was a state only event. Um, there's different types, so there's state events and then the events that move on to nationals. So Tessa went with us to San Diego and she was an alternate voting delegate while we were out there. Um, and she is looking forward to this year. So go ahead, Tessa. Last year was my first year to compete in anything to FCCLA, so for my star event I chose Children's Literature Level 1. I chose this because um, I find little kids very fun to work with, so this came easy to me for the decision. The theme this year was Route 66, and I had to write and illustrate a 12-page children's book based on Route 66, so basically I researched it and all of the events that I found interesting, I wrote down and I learned more about them. And this girl, main character, and she takes you through 66 and she just 
teaches you about each thing, and I feel like this event really helped me with my confidence in public speaking as well as um, trying new things. So, yeah, I won state for this star event, and I had the opportunity to go to nationals in San Diego, California, which was a great experience, and I miss it already so much. So, thank you. <laughs> Okay, next is Gracia. Uh, Gracia competed in cake decorating and she was a state qualifier uh, last year. She also went with us to San Diego and she served as a youth room consultant for Starbucks. Right. Well, like she said, I competed in cake decorating, but I was not able to qualify for state because we had an issue with um, ID decks. <laughs> so. I had to do everything in one color, and that was not good. <laughs> but um, throughout my experience, like just going to state, and um, I, I was very scared at first because I was told that they were going to ask questions, and I was like, okay, this is going to be good. But it ended up helping like, widen my speaking skills, and also like. Being able to go to nationals was such a big deal for me because I know I didn't qualify for nationals. Well, you can't really in cake decorating, but it was really an eye-opening experience because one of the things that hit me the most while I was down in California was how much poverty there is. And that is an issue that's really close to my heart and it really hurts me to see those people struggle so um, I actually, it has caused me to want to go to bigger cities and do things like mission trips and stuff. So this year, actually this summer, I'm going to Seattle for a week and I'll be going on a mission trip and that will be like right after nationals. So, <laughs> um, and I'm just really excited to start my next event in SCCLA. Okay, and we will finish with Hope Jordan. Um, Hope is our chapter president, and she is also serving as our district president. There are only 20 district presidents in the entire state, um, so she is one of the 20. Uh, Hope has competed in star events each year. She's a junior this year. So as an eighth grader, she um, was state runner-up, national runner-up. As a freshman, she was state runner-up and national runner-up. And then last year, she uh, broke that barrier, state champion, um, and national runner-up for the third time, so um, nothing to scoff at for sure, but this year is the year to break through that and become a national champion. And then virtual business challenge in 2021, she was national runner-up, and then last year, third place um, nationally. FCCLA has given me so many opportunities because I have been able to job shadow and nurse some messages, so I was able to scrub in on a surgery and watch that surgery while they were giving her the anesthetics. And then I was also able to job shadow a FCS teacher at Medford. And that was really eye-opening about what all of our teachers do and how much they care about their students. Another opportunity that FCCLA has given me was I was able to go to NLC in Nashville two years ago. And I had never been there and I, it was just a new place and it was so fun to be in that atmosphere. And then I was also able to go to San Diego and that was just a beautiful place to be and it was so like warm but it was also just so inviting at the same time um but for my star event i did fcs education which meant that i investigated an fcs teacher and that was a pathway that i thought i might want to go down and as i investigated it i found that i really might actually want to be a teacher so that was really fun for me. Um, FCCLA has helped me with being confident in my public speaking skills and my leadership skills. So FCCLA has given me the opportunities to help my teacher. Um, I just want to say thank you to you all because um, the, the great things that they've accomplished and those that came before uh, would not be possible if we didn't have your support. So. Um, just know that we are grateful for that and um, we're, we're starting up on the next round of servants so 
Out of 60 membership forms I've had turned in, I've only had 10 say no to Starbucks, so that means 50. Um, that might be, <laughs> might be a little unattainable, um, unless you can get a couple more of me. Um, but hopefully next year we can bring triple this amount here. So. Well, we appreciate all everything you guys have accomplished and representing uh, Turkey's public schools. And, uh, congratulations to all of you. Session to discuss the employment of support personnel so that the board may return to open session and vote to employ or find a reason not to employ support personnel pending background <laughs> checks pursuant uh, 25 OS 307 B1. Uh, make a motion to convene into the executive session. Do I have a second? I'll second. Second. Chief? Welcome. Yes. Good one? Yep. Parker? Yes. Gibson? Yes. Collins? Yes. 635. All right, acknowledgement of the board's return to open session. Do I have a, I'll make a motion to return to open session. Do I have a second? I'll second. Desiree, second. Judy? Littlefield? Yes. Goodwin? Yep. Parker? Yes. Gibson? Yes. Collins? Yes. 649. Go ahead with the minutes. In the executive session, we discussed the employment of support personnel for the 2022-2023 school year. Thank you. Uh, number five. Discussion and vote to approve the employment of Sophie Cummins as elementary paraprofessional for the 22-23 school year. Uh, I would make the recommendation that uh, we hire Sophie Cummins uh, as uh, elementary paraprofessional for the school year. Thank you. Any questions? Uh, if not, I'll make a motion to hire Sophie to approve that hire. Heather second. Judy? Littlefield? Yes. Good one? Yes. Parker? Yes. Gibson? Yes. Collins? Yes. Number six, discussion and vote to approve or not to approve a one-year waiver to serve fewer than 10 students in alternative education for the 22-23 school year. 
Uh, this is something that we submit uh, almost yearly uh, with our alternative education program. Uh, required to turn into the State Department that we serve here in the tent, as it says. So we currently have four students enrolled in Chief Academy. Uh, that could change. Uh, could have more, we could have less. Uh, but so far, that program is served as well. Uh, but the state requires that we have less than 10 students enrolled in that, that if we uh, turn out a, a, reg, a waiver and do regulation. Um, so that's what this is, and we've done that for the last couple of years. Any questions over that? I make a motion to approve the one year waiver. Is there a motion? Do I have a second? A second. Shane, second. Judy? Willifield? Yes. Goodwin? Yes. Parker? Yes. Gibson? Yes. Collins? Yes. Number seven, board to discuss a policy pertaining to SB 615 for the 22-23 school year vote to approve or not to approve said policy. Uh, so we were emailed uh, a few weeks ago from the OSSBA with some emergency rules. Uh, and we are going to be, uh, accreditation officer will be looking uh, at this policy as part of 615. Uh, Senate Bill 615, I, I gave everybody a copy if you would like to read through that bill yourself. Um, but Senate Bill 615 um, go th goes through several things, but um, basically this law uh, means that um, whatever your sex is on your birth certificate, that is the restroom that you have to use in a public facility. And so that applies to all schools. Um, what the emergency rules are saying from the state um, now as a public school, we have to have a policy that would provide disciplinary action to individuals who refuse to follow that rule. So um, there are lists. I have these. Um, so if they refuse to use the designated uh, restrooms or changing areas designed for their sex, um, if they refuse to use uh, uh, any of the any of the designated areas uh, that are assigned to them uh, as part of that Senate Bill 615, um, then there is disciplinary action for students. There is disciplinary action that could be made for staff members that fall underneath those, or uh, patrons that are on your, uh, in your facilities. Um, our student handbook defines any act of disobedience as a class two offense. Um, and so, in discussion with uh, principals, um, we feel that our policy um, covers that in our handbook. That if um, you know if they didn't follow those rules, uh, they would fall underneath a class two offense. That is either uh, could be a day of in-school suspension, it could be a day of out-of-school suspension. It kind of depends on the severity of the interaction and just how disobedient uh, they would be. Uh, as for staff members, uh, there's due process procedures that would have to be followed as part of this policy. Uh, and then there's also uh, a process that people can file complaints. We have those policies in place if people want to file complaints against us in any way. Uh, so this changes nothing. It's just uh, they just kind of micromanaging us. Uh, basically. And maybe the next policy they'll come out with is they'll start requiring clothes. You know, I, mean, I don't know if it's just a waste of time. C, I don't know if C part of the law before where you have to provide a single occupancy restroom. So, hey, that will change. I don't know. No, it, it wasn't necessarily before. Uh, our facilities are set up. We do have those areas that are single use available if the issue arises. So, um, you know, we, we would be able to make those accommodations if, if we have an issue. Uh, but like I said, this came out a couple weeks ago, and uh, OSSBA directed us to make sure that we we have this part of the policy in place, that there is we have a plan for disciplinary action if we have problems. Uh, like I said, our handbook already states, talks about disobedience, and we do feel like that definitely falls underneath that category. Uh, and that's how it would be handled 
um, if that was if that was to arise. Any questions or thoughts or concerns on that? Curtis made a motion to approve. I'll second. Little Yes. Goodwin? Yes. Parker? Yes. Gibson? Yes. Collins? Yes. Number eight, board to retake action on the employment of uh, Stephen L. Smith Corporation as financial consultants to the district school district for the fiscal year of 22-23. Oh, we had that to sign. Okay. Right. Yes. I mean, that's basically, I don't know. Do I have it? Yeah. Huh? Do I have it? Or no, it's right there. Oh, it's right there. Oh, it's right there. Okay. Right there. Mm -hmm. okay. Mm, is that something that needs approval? We approved it last board meeting. Okay, that's we just didn't have this. Okay. So there's no no action other than signing, or do we want to go through that right now and sign it? Or is that something we can do after the meeting? Uh, I, I think that they're going to want to see the see dates minutes. match match up with the minutes. Okay. That, that's why we did go ahead and approve yep. the signing on the same day. So it was approved at the last meeting, correct? Yes. Because I was. We might go ahead and approve it again, just like okay. Bryce said, so the dates match. Okay. Um, and we obviously you've been using them for as long as I've been here, but um, so I make a motion to go ahead and approve the Stephen L. Smith Corporation as our financial consultants for the 22-23 school year. Do I have a second? I'll second. Desiree, a second. Judy. Lowell. Yes. Good one. Yes. Parker. Yes. Gibson. Yes. Collins. Yes. Number nine, superintendent's report. Um, I don't have a lot. Uh, our principals have covered quite a bit. Um, you know, just to kind of reiterate some things on our financial status, we are going in the right direction. Uh, we do have carryover uh, as of right now. You know, we, we shouldn't be in any situation uh, like we were last year, um, looking at a negative balance before our January. Revenue comes in, which is uh, when our tax revenue, uh, the bulk of it, comes in. Um, so we have the carryover there to uh, to get us through uh, that way. Uh, there are several things that we're going to have to keep an eye on. Like I said, utility costs uh, and just you know inflation costs, shipping costs. It's getting harder and harder to find things, uh, supplies, and so. What we've started doing is, uh, even like with our copy paper, uh, we usually spread out that purchase a little bit throughout the year, but we bought quite a bit to start this year uh, to make sure that we got it. We got it at the price that it was at then before those costs went up. And so, uh, you know, we're just trying to take a common sense approach to some of those things. If there's stuff that we can buy now and get bulk that will last us through the year so that we don't see another uh, price hike later in the year. Uh, we're trying to do with those. I will say that most of our, you know, our vendors and everybody that we use, um, they're trying to help us out as much as we can. And so uh, that's good. And uh, gross production, uh, gross production was up. It was the highest it's been. Uh, I've taken over. It's, it's the highest it's been last month. It's a little over 143,000 for us, um, and I think that that will stay up. May not be that high this next month. Um, I think it'll be close to that, and then it's going to taper off just a little bit as the prices went down. But you know, we're we're seeing that revenue off those 100, 115, 120 dollar barrel prices uh, that we had earlier this year. Um, so that'll taper off a little bit, but. You know, it's still good good news there um, and it's helping us you know, build that carryover amount up and get our general fund healthy 
our state, the foundation aid that we do get uh, from the state, that is up about 30000 this year. That could change uh, when the uh, uh, midterm uh, comes around uh, after the first of the year. Uh, there's always a chance that that could change a little bit. Um, but as of right now, it's up. So even if it was to decrease a little bit, I still think we're in pretty good shape there. Um, so that's good news also. Uh, working with our uh, county assessor and treasurer to get some estimates in on our taxes. As of right now, it appears that we're not really going to see any difference from what we collected last year and what we'll collect this year, even though there's protests going on. Uh, our valuation is up a little bit, and so the protested amounts are kind of balancing out, so to speak, and giving us a little bit of consistency from one year to the next instead of such drastic up and downs uh, or downs, we're not really ups, but uh, like we've seen in the past. So there still is a little over $3 million being protested uh, currently. That doesn't mean that's not $3 million that we would get. That just means the total evaluation. Uh, so there's still a couple hundred thousand dollars uh, that should come to the school uh, out of that $3 million. But we've formulated our budgets to know that we're not going to get that money. If things get settled and whatever comes in, then that would be extra in that sense. So as of right now, they've kind of leveled off a little bit. And uh, while they're still not good and they are affecting us, they're not having a negative effect on us uh, like they, they did in the past. So, uh, you know, I think that's good news. Uh, we're kind of learning how to live with that and how that's going to affect us year to year. Uh, we met today, we sat down uh, with uh, our representative from Barlow who uh, helps handle our federal programs. Uh, Mrs. Patterson and I and Judy uh, and, and him, we sat down today and went through uh, our federal programs and we'll start getting those budgets put together and applications submitted for this year. Some of those allocations are uh, up a little bit. We still have some uh, ESSER funds that we can spend. So we have a lot of federal dollars uh, that are available. Uh, and you know, I'm just going to mention that there has been talk um, of possibly Oklahoma schools losing federal funding uh, with possible uh, future state uh, leadership if elected. And I just want to say that um, I don't think people fully understand how detrimental that would be to not just us, but all Oklahoma schools if that were to happen. We rely heavily on title funding, um, and that comes from the federal government. If we were to lose out on that funding we're talking about, uh, for us, it's several hundred thousand dollars a year. Uh, and we, we, can't, we can't put that bill on our own. And so I don't know of many schools that could. There may be a few that could last a little bit, but not very long. And so that's a big deal. That's something that uh, I think uh, we need to keep an eye on. And, uh, you know, I'm going to try to put some numbers together just so we would see exactly what that would look like for us. Uh, just to be prepared, but I hope that that's something that doesn't happen. Uh, along those lines, uh, I will start getting our, uh, as soon as we get our estimates neat, uh, I will start putting some budgets together uh, like we went over last year and some projections and what that looks like. And we'll kind of start, uh, you know, taking a look at some different projects and things like that that we need to start addressing some bigger picture things uh, short term and long term as well. Uh, one thing that uh, I kind of want to you know, put out there right now is we did have our first student council meeting. I started having those meetings. Uh, Mr. Jordan has student council meetings, but I started sitting in on those last year, uh, which I thought were very, uh, it was a good way to communicate with our kids and, and hear what's going on, especially over here uh, as they advocate for different things. Uh, but one project that they're going to start working on uh, is just kind of some school beautification things. Uh, we have posters in our hallway, and, and those are different at different times, but we have just a lot of just blank space. And so that's something that they're looking at. They're looking at uh, finding somebody that may come up here and volunteer if we can figure out a way to pay for the paint. And just, you know, maybe it's a Cherokee Chief uh, mural. One idea was the paint. It's a great day be a chief kind of down this hallway uh, in the restrooms, uh, but you know, just things that 
put out a positive school culture uh, atmosphere. And so student council is kind of heading that up. They're starting to get ideas together. Of course, all of those things would be approved before we just let anybody take a paintbrush, uh, you know, in there. But uh, I think that can be a really neat thing for them to take on and you know, give those kids an opportunity to see what you know, student council, what they can do and get input from their classmates. And, uh, so kind of excited about that. I think that will be a really neat thing as it goes along. So as it does, uh, we'll keep everybody updated as far as that goes. But uh, it's, been, uh, it's been a whirlwind getting school started. Uh, very busy. Uh, I think the hot weather is making it a little more. Not making it miserable, but uh, it's just, uh, yeah. So, you know, kudos to the kids for being out there and playing softball and football and uh, cross country and just doing all those things and working. It doesn't, it doesn't seem to bother them, but I think it bothers the adult. Uh, I know it bothers me a lot more than it used to. So, uh, other than that, staff has been uh, just awesome getting everything going. Uh, and starting this year uh, with our new hires, and I think everything is going really well. So, uh, good things. Yeah. Thanks, Chris. Uh, under 10, any new business? There's no new business. All right. Number 11, I make a motion to adjourn. Do I have a second? Does there a second? Judy. Wolfhill? Yes. Goodwin? Yes. Parker? Yes. Hudson? Yes. yes. Collins? Yes. I have stuff for everybody to find. Seven seven. Okay, thank you.